Hello, this is Kyle. Let's write some code. Isomorphic JavaScript just basically means that your JavaScript will run the same on a client or in a browser um, as it would on a server, say through Node.js. Um, and in, even in some uh, instances, maybe through uh, iOS or Android. A, maybe a more appropriate word for it would be portable JavaScript because your JavaScript's portable and moving it around. Um, but, you know, isomorphic is a very fancy word. Uh, just be prepared to uh, maybe change your definition if you're talking to a mathematician because they probably have a more different understanding of that word uh, than how it's being used in this context. So let's explore what this means in a practical example. Um, so we are going to write something for the server here. We're going to use the FS module from Node.js and we're going to write a function um, that basically just reads a file and it uppercases the file. Um, so we'll give a file name here and then a callback to call when we have finished reading the file. And so we'll use fs read file here and it will read this file name in and then once it has finished reading that file it will give us the contents of the file here. And we're just going to call this done function. Um, we're passing the first parameter as null because uh, through a node convention uh, you would indicate that the first uh, argument is an error, if there is an error. But if there isn't an error, because we're just not going to worry about errors right now, we're just going to pass in null right there. Um, so let's just take the file that we've got, the contents of the file, we'll two-string it, and we'll just say two upper case. Very simple API, just takes a file and uh, converts it to an uppercase. So now we can use uh, this API here and we're going to read this uh, bears.txt file I have already set up here. Um, and then we'll just console log out the file. So I have here the bears uh, file and it has a bunch of lowercase uh, bear names. And so now we're just going to run this and we're going to run this by typing in uh, node and then the name of our file and hit enter. And as expected, everything is uppercase and that's great. But now what we want to do is uh, I have a, a Browserify uh, set up here and um, I'll put a link in the description to getting this same setup going for you. Um, but I'm just using the module Budo here and I'm going to use this on the same thing and, uh, on our, our same script that I wrote here for the server. And so I'm going to type npm start here to start up our server which will run this and um, compile this for the browser. So let's see what happens when we run the script that we wrote specifically for uh, the server on the client side. And no surprise, fs read file is not a function because file systems don't exist on the web browser. That's crazy. Why would it ever try to do that? Uh, so, but we want to make this portable or isomorphic. And so what we need to do is come up with a strategy to change our API uh, to make this run the same both on a browser and the server. So one strategy is to just change your API here. Um, instead of having the read um, happen within your API, um, your API just simply focuses on the task that it's doing, which is uh, uppercasing this file here. And so what we can do is we can just replace this. And we'll just say, um, we'll just call this uppercase now. And instead, we'll have the source uh, uppercase. So we'll say return source uh, two string uppercase. And so then uh, Browserify uh, gives you this uh, uh, flag here called process browser. Um, and that indicates whether or not it's in the browser or not. So we can say, okay, if it's in the browser here, we can, we can get this list uh, through whatever method we want. Um, we're just passing a string here. Otherwise, if it's, uh, you know, if we're here on the server, um, then we can require FS um, and read the file bears.txt. And once it's read, we'll have the file contents. And now at this point, we can uppercase our file name. Uh, so that's one way is to is just to make your um, your JavaScript so generic that it's really easy um, to uh, to make it isomorphic. And but the, I mean the main problem with this is that you're offloading a lot of the functionality here onto your users. I mean this is what your users are going to be implementing. Um, your API is up there, and so this might not be desirable for you. And so there's another way. 
So let's go back to our original API here. Um, back, 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 back. Because that's the API we want. Uh, we don't want to modify our API. We, we like this one. This, this, this one works for us. We like this one. This one's good. So instead, um, what if we can just modify FS here, since this is what's not, uh, not found. Um, what if we just provide our own if we're on the browser here? And so let's, let's go ahead and do that. We'll create a new file. We'll call it fake uh, dash fs, and then in here we'll just say module exports because we're just going to export an object here, and uh, the method that we want that we're using here is read file. So that's the only one we have to implement. So we'll just call it read file, and read file takes a file name, um, and then it has a callback when it's done when it's finished reading that file. So what this could be, this could be some kind of JSON API call. Like maybe this goes and it calls some remote server and it gets uh, this JSON um, data back and then we call the done function here uh, with our bears. And so that is the, how we get the list of bears when we're on um, the browser. We get it just from a file uh, here on our server, but we get it from uh, another API somewhere else. And so. Now that we have this fake uh, FS module that we want to replace in here, uh, Browserify has a way to do this. And so typically, if you're using Browserify, say you have a build um, script here, and we have Browserify. Uh, Browserify lets you specify this require option here, and which you give it the name of the file that uh, you want to require. So in our case, it's fake.fs or fake-fs.js, blah, 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 blah. blah. And uh, then you put a colon and you put the module that you want to replace. So we're going to replace the FS module. But since we're using Budo here, uh, we can also pacify those Browserify options in. So when our server is recompiling Browserify every single time, it uses these options. And so you do so at the very end, you add two dashes, and then you can specify Browserify options. So we're going to use that instead here, and then we're going to roll our server. And first, let's make sure. Uh, does it still work on the server? Yes, it does. We get a list of our uh, bears in uppercase. So let's start up our server here. Let's refresh our browser. And lo and behold, we get our list um, of bears uppercased here as well. So now let's do it the other way around. Um, let's start off with a, uh, a client side script example. And so to do so, um, let's just go ahead and just let's just make a list here. Um, we'll create a UL tag. We'll say document. Whoa, I can't spell document. Create element. I can't spell element either. Uh, and so we'll create a, a UL tag here. Um, and then we'll create our list of bears. Um, so we'll say grizzly and then, I don't know, um, polar. Those are always fun. Um, and so then each of these bears, let's loop through them. And we're going to create a li tag for each one. So say li document create element and li tag. And then li inner text equals the bear name. And then we need to append uh, this child, the li tag to our ul tag here. And then finally, at the very end here, uh, we just are going to append um, that entire list, this ul tag, to um, the document body. So we'll save that. We'll run our server here by typing npm start. And now when we fire up the list, you see that we get a UL tag with uh, two bears in it, and it works just fine on the client side. But now we want to run this on the server. So we're going to type in node and the name of the file. We're going to run it. Document is not defined because document does not exist on the server. Document is available through the browser. It's a global. So we need a way to shim this. And globals are actually really easy to shim. Um, so uh, you basically just say, is the global there? Then use it. Uh, otherwise, if it's not there, then provide your own. And so uh, luckily enough, we have a nice module to, that does this. Uh, so we'll do npm install, and we'll say global. And we'll just save it to our package.json file here. So global comes with a document that we can use. So we'll say var document equals require global document. So global has many different globals that it can uh, provide to you. And so we only care about the document here. So now, instead of just appending it here, uh, we want to console log out 
our UL tags. So now we can just say UL two string, and when we type node index.js, we get our HTML here. So this is useful because if we have a website and maybe we want to use the same code that we're, we're building the client side of the website, and we want to maybe render the static HTML first so um, search engines can pick it up and it'll just load faster on the first thing. And so we can just have either you know an HTTP server or some kind of static uh, asset or, or some kind of thing that first calls this using the same code that you provided here and it writes out these static files and then once everything is loaded then the dynamic uh, JavaScript that runs in the browser can takes over. So that's what's really awesome about this is that you can have the same piece of code run in both environments um, with changing very little and sometimes not, nothing at all. So hopefully you now know what isomorphic JavaScript is or maybe you have a different opinion of what it is. Uh, leave a comment in the below and let me know. If you found this video helpful and useful, then please share it. I would appreciate that. And if you want to see more videos, please subscribe. Thanks again for watching. Whoa, whoa, whoa. L-I inner text equals grizzly. That's not right. And if you caught that, then you are an awesome bug finder. Uh, that was a test. Of course it was a test. I was just testing to make sure you, you saw that. Uh, but anyways, uh, I since then have sent a pull request to MinDocument to fix that. And so as you can see here, that is now fixed. So you should not run into that.